Yeah, that's perfect. And yeah, and this talk is also, I'm, I'm very excited to hear about it, which is like, uh, I think he's taking a CS problem of decidability and undecidability and inserting some stochastic thermodynamics, quantum stochastic thermodynamics. So you look forward to that. So you can start now, though. Okay, thank you for introducing. I'm Naoto Shiraishi from the University of Tokyo. Today, I talk about the unreservability in the quantum summarization phenomena. My talk is based on this paper. So if you're interested in detail, please see this paper. This is the outline of my talk. First, uh, since I think uh, most of the audience are not familiar with the quantum summarization, uh, we re first review uh, this uh, topic. As we know in our daily life, if we leave a uh, many body system at no equilibrium, then uh, this system will relax to the unique equilibrium state, which is called summarization. Also, uh, almost all quantum many body systems uh, show summarization. There exist some exceptional systems uh, which do not summarize. A famous example is integral systems. In this case, uh, the system uh, shows relaxation but uh, the value after relaxation is uh, far from the equilibrium value. So uh, the central uh, problem uh, in this field is uh, what property determines the presence or absence of summarization and uh, how to understand the summarization phenomena. These are uh, big problems. To uh, state this, we first uh, define what is summer. A uh, pure state uh, psi is summer with respect to an observable A. If uh, the expectation value of A with psi is equal to its equilibrium value. And a typicality argument states that almost all uh, pure quantum states are summer state. We next define what is summarization. An initial state psi zero summarizes with respect to an observable A if for almost all time T, the state is summer with respect to A. Here we plot the value of A uh, with, uh, <coughs> versus time. Because of quantum recur uh, recurrence theorem, uh, the value will uh, <coughs> go back to the highly non equilibrium value, which is close to the initial one. But at almost all time, the value uh, settles close to the equilibrium value. This is summarization. The main target uh, of this uh, quantum <laughs> summarization is uh, to clarify what, uh, <coughs> what condition determines an initial state of psi zero with Hamiltonian H summarizes or not with respect to an observable A. If we uh, have a general theorem uh, to decide, summarize or not, then uh, the big problem in uh, this field is solved. However, unfortunately, we shall show that this problem is undecidable. So we cannot solve for general <coughs> uh, setups. This is our mes main message. But, uh, <coughs> Next, we review uh, the briefly review the theoretical computer science. We here employ a Turing machine as a, a simple computational system. A Turing machine consists of a control unit and an infinite sequence of <coughs> cells. And the state of a cell uh, is led by the head. And the control unit reads a single cell and change its own internal state and or relate the state in the red cell and or move uh, the head uh, left or right by one cell. This is an example of a rule. If the initial state is S2, if the <laughs> internal state is S2 and uh, the head reads zero, then the internal state evolves to S4 and the cell, the state of cell is uh, kept unchanged and the head moves right. This is one example of the dynamics. Also, uh, this Turing machine is very primitive and simple. 
There, in fact, exists a universal reversible Turing machine, which uh, can emulate any computer task. So uh, the universal Turing machine is as powerful as, as our laptop and our uh, <laughs> supercomputer. So the Turing machine can compute uh, what is computable. We next uh, define the decision program. Decision program is a yes no question of input. An example is the primary test. In this case, input is a natural number n. And the problem is uh, to decide whether n is prime or not. For example, if the input is 7, then we should answer yes. And if the input is 12, we should answer no. A decision problem is decidable if there exists a procedure or algorithm which always answers yes, no correctly. So if uh, the problem is solved in the form of the theorem, then of course this problem is decidable. And a combinatorial optimization problem, which is practically very hard problem, uh, is also decidable because we can solve the optimization problem by a brute force method. And there exist many, many uh, decision problems, uh, decidable decision problems. If a decision problem is not decidable, so there is no procedure or algorithm which decides yes or no correctly for all inputs, then this problem is undecidable. The notion of undecidability is related to Gader's incompleteness theorem. We here present an example of the unsightable problem, the halting problem, Turing machine. Here, uh, the input is an input code for a fixed universal Turing machine. And the problem is, does this universal Turing machine with this input halt at some time or does not halt and move forever? The Alan Turing proves that this problem is unsightable. So there is no procedure deciding whether uh, this universal Turing machine holds or moves forever. Okay. Now we move to our main result. We consider one dimensional quantum system with periodic boundary condition. The dimension of the local Hilbert space is fixed at D. Here, uh, both observable A and initial state of psi zeros are given arbitrarily and fixed, and only the Hamiltonian is input. We consider this type of decision problem. Of course, if uh, the observable A, initial state psi zero, and Hamiltonian H are very complicated, complex one, then the decision problem of summarization becomes very hard. It is naturally <laughs> natural expectation. However, we uh, shall show that even with a very simple form of A, Psi zero, and H, the problem of summarization is still unsightable. This is our claim. We restrict the for, uh, class of observable as a spatial average of one body observable. So the observable can be written in this form. And initial state is also restricted to a product state of uh, almost uniform one. Here, uh, this state is different uh, from uh, this state, this state, but all other states are the same one. And input, uh, ha so the Hamiltonian is also restricted to a uh, nearest number interaction and shift invariant one. So the Hamiltonian is fully characterized by the d square times d square local Hamiltonian, h. And using h, the total Hamiltonian can be written as this. And in the case of the unstability of relaxation, the target value ester is also an input. Our addition problem of relaxation with promise can be stated uh, as follows. We should decide whether uh, the long time average of A is close to a target value ester with error epsilon 1, or the <coughs> long time average is far from ester with the uh, margin epsilon 2. If the long time average uh, sits between these two, we uh, need not to uh, <coughs> give a correct answer. 
this is a meaning of promise. And our uh, main result is that this decision problem summarization with promise is undecidable. So no uh, algorithm, no pros or no procedure decide the presence or absence of summarization for given Hamiltonian. Because uh, it is easy to set a stir to the equilibrium value, in the following, we treat the unsettability of relaxation. To, to prove uh, this theorem, uh, this lemma is essential. For any code for universal Turing machine, there exists a corresponding Hamiltonian uh, such that uh, the system uh, with this Hamiltonian summarizes if and only if the corresponding universal Turing machine with, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the if and only if the universal Turing machine with the corresponding code holds. Because the holding problem is unsightable, fitted problem by Turing, summarization is also unsightable. This is the proof structure. Uh, precisely, uh, we proved uh, this as <coughs> lemma uh, in two steps. In the first step, we construct a classical many body cellular automata whose long time average of A varies depending on whether the universal Turing machine with the corresponding input code holds or not. Then, in the second step, we emulate this classical cellular automata by quantum many body system. Since uh, the second uh, step, is a well-known method uh, called the feynman kitaev construction. We here mainly treat the first step in the following talk, in the reminder of talk. <coughs> okay. Now uh, we move to the first step of the proof, construction of the classical machine. The classical cellular automata uh, consists of two types of cells, M cells and A cells. The M cells, uh, store the input code for the universal Turing machine, and M cells also serve as a working space of universal Turing machine. Our M cell consists of three layers. The role of A cell uh, is to change the value of A between the case of the halting and non-halting. And there, there are three Turing machines, uh, TM1 and TM2, which runs in M cells and TM3 which run in A cells. This is the schematic of the classical system. Uh, red cells are A cells, and <coughs> white uh, three-layered cells are M cells. And the control unit also sits uh, in the line of these cells. When uh, the head moves, then we swap the control unit and the <coughs> neighboring cells as this. M cell uh, consists of three layers. The first layer serves as a working space for universal Turing machine, and the second and third layers uh, store the information of the input uh, code for uh, this universal Turing machine. <coughs> and the, the layer two and layer three consist of spin one half, or a zero one bit in the classical case. This is a flowchart of the dynamics of the classical cell automata. In the first step, uh, TM1 decodes the input code X for universal Turing machine from layers two and three. Yes. Then TM2, which is universal, runs with this input code X. If TM2 does not hold, nothing happens. And the value of A remains at the initial value which uh, we set zero. On the other hand, if TM2 holds, then TM3 starts flipping the state of A cells, which uh, changes the value of A. Now uh, we explain in the <coughs> these three steps in detail. We uh, encode uh, the input code X in the following manner. We first, uh, the input code X with 0 and bit is encoded to the real number beta. The here, the decimal expansion of beta is equal to this input code. For example, if the input code is 1101, 
Then we set beta as 0.1011 in the decimal expansion, which is equal to 11 over 16. So beta is set to 11 over 16. And in the classical case, we set uh, the uh, frequency of bit one in the layer two as beta. And in the quantum case, we line up uh, this quantum state in the second layer. So uh, the relative frequency of one in the second layer is equal to beta. The first Turing machine measures the relative frequency of one in layer two and output uh, this value to layer one. This is a process of decoding. Then the TM2, uh, which is the universal one, run with this input x. Here we remark that at the uh, beginning of this <coughs> move of the TM2, the leftmost cell is uh, flipped as the wall state. If uh, the TM2 tries to pass uh, the wall, which means that the TM2 tries to pass the periodic boundary, then TM2 hit the wall, and then uh, TM2 cannot pass this wall, and TM2 just stops. In case of non halting TM2 uh, tries to move forever, so TM2 must hit the wall at some time, and then stops. And if TM2 halts, then uh, the TM3 starts moving, and the value in the A cells are flipped uh, from <coughs> Uplift and to a non zero value. Then, uh, if TM3 uh, <coughs> flips all the A cells, then uh, TM3 stops. Okay, this is a uh, structure of the classical machine. Now uh, we construct a quantum system which emulates this classical system. The basic idea of the emulation is the Feynman step Hamiltonian without clock. Here, uh, the Hamiltonian is constructed as a one uh, quantum isometry and its uh, conjugation. Here, uh, this quantum isometry induces a one-step time evolution in the classical cell automaton. Here, uh, Xn is a computational basis state uh, which corresponding uh, to the classical Turing, uh, the state of the classical Turing machine as the nth step. Applying uh, Xn uh, v to the Xn, then the state becomes Xn plus one. And on the other hand, the V dagger uh, induces uh, the backward dynamics. <coughs> we uh, explain this by uh, taking an example. If, uh, for example, this, if the classical Turing machine in this state evolves to this state, then we set the local Hamiltonian with uh, Ket 0 Q4, Bura Q20, as this. And we uh, take its uh, shift sum. We note that uh, this Hamiltonian is local, nearest neighbor, and only the vicinity of the control unit can evolve uh, by construction. Now uh, we uh, show how, uh, <coughs> what is the correspondence between the classical system and quantum system. Suppose that uh, the classical uh, dynamics of the CA is written as this. Then the quantum, a uh, single energy eigenstate of the quantum system is the superposition of the <coughs> these states. So we do not uh, emulate the classical dynamics directly. But uh, in the case of halting, most uh, of the states in this dynamics have a large value of A. So in the quantum system, the energy eigenstate En has a large expectation value of A because in uh, these uh, states have a large uh, expectation value of A. We have this type of correspondence between the classical and the quantum. Okay. Now uh, we explain some uh, extension and then some uh, close. Now, so, I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Okay, you're closing. Okay, this is a question time. That's it. Okay. 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 Uh, we have shown that uh, shown that not only the unstability but also Turing completeness of summarization. Turing completeness means that all uh, almost all po um, possi all possible computation. So the summarization can solve all uh, possible computational tasks. 
So we have very, very many interesting applications. We here present one striking example. It is known that there exists a 744 state Turing machine, which holds if and only if Riemann hypothesis is false. It is a known fact. So by applying our technique, we can show that there exists a one dimensional system which summarizes if and only if Riemann hypothesis is false. We remark that we do not know whether Riemann hypothesis is true or false, but we can construct this one dimensional system explicitly. This is the summary of my talk, and uh, thank you for listening.